Kentucky played an important role in the civil rights movement. And from street marches to the pulpit to Louisville schools, Maddie Jones has fought for justice and equality for more than seven decades. People from all over came to Selma so that we could march across that Edmund Pester Bridge going into the Capitol to demand our voting rights. The first time we started, it was very brutal. I was on the third row behind our Congressman John Lewis. I saw him on the ground and they had beat him terrible. And we call it Bloody Sunday, but it didn't discourage us. We went back, some got patched up, and we recuperated ourselves and got ready to march again. I uh, went and applied to the University of Louisville. So I realized that my mother and my father both were hard workers. I realized that I needed the help. So I got an interview. The supervisor came in and spoke very nicely and all, and he looked at my application. He said, uh, did you fill this out? I said, yes, I did. He said, uh, do you mind filling out another one? I said, something wrong. He says, well, no. Mm -hmm. He was quite disturbed. He says, well, he says, uh, the ladies out front there, they won't work with you. That was an awakening for me. I came straight home. I was a very angry, angry person. And my mother said, hey, wait a minute. She said, let me tell you something. She said, this has been going on for a very long time. She says, so now, you cannot just mumble and grumble and think you can change things. That's not going to do it. She said, you find yourself an organization. And the first time I heard the word racism said in my house. I took my mother's advice. I started out and I did make a couple of the NAACP meetings. So I joined Black Workers Coalition, another organization called the Kentucky Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression that was based in New York. One evening, I went down to the meeting and sitting there a few minutes, the door bell rang and in stepped these men, four or five of them, and Dr. King. Oh my, I tell you, that floored me. Oh, I don't know how I felt. I don't know if I jumped up, I sat down, I, but it just to see all these strong men and to see Dr. King. And they came in and, and the, what they were talking to us and how they talked to us and talking about the nonviolence of the movement. And we were organizing around the march on Frankfurt. And uh, that just made me deep and deeper into wanting to make a change. I am so glad that I was blessed with that opportunity. So I continued this movement. I continued this struggle for a very long time. Growing up in our home with my mom, Maddie Jones, as a civil rights activist, I learned how to cook early, take care of things in the house, manage things so that she could be able to go out and fight for not just our rights, but for everyone's rights. We have to share her with the world. We've learned that as part of my mom's legacy, she fights for fairness for all. She will definitely be the hungry. She has a special place for mentally ill people and fighting for their rights. She wants everybody to be treated as human beings. We've come a long ways, and we've got a long ways to go. And I want to be remembered that I helped pull the wagon from the cotton gin to the White House. An inspiration to generations, Maddie wants to keep the focus on the movement. I wasn't a leader and never wanted to be a leader. Maddie Jones had heard the call to stand up for freedom and justice and equality for all, and I joined that movement. I had eight children of my own. I had six girls and two boys. My husband and I were foster parents for more than 30 years. All of my traveling around trying to help to make this a better world. It surprises me that my people, African-American people of this young generation don't vote. And some of the older people that don't vote 
I hear the question of what's in it for me? And that's the almighty power we have. When you turn 18, you should be the first ones at the registrar's office registering to vote, making sure that you vote and you get the right person in office that should be there. This is yet one more extraordinary story that can only be experienced in Kentucky. I'm a 90-year-old teenager now. I often tell people in the words of the late Reverend Lewis Coleman, I can't give up until I go up. 